Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back. Welcome to the vlog. I'm Kelly. If you're new here, I am currently in my office at work. I It's Sunday. Um, I haven't worked a weekend shift in like so long. I've been very, very grateful. I was supposed to work one last weekend, but um, I switched with a coworker, so I worked one earlier in the month. So I'm here on a weekend shift, and not only is it a weekend, sh my first weekend shift in a while, it's also my last week at work here. Um, I'm going to give an update on ending my clinical fellowship and what that meant for me moving forward, but I only have three more shifts here, and I'm on to the next, next place where I'm going to be working, so I'm very bittersweet about it. Um, but I gotta get this day started. I got here a little bit earlier. Um, on the weekends, we can kind of make our own time. If you wanna get here early, then you can. So I got here just before seven. It's about eight o'clock now. I've already done my chart review, so I'm gonna head out onto the floor. I <laughs> logged into the computer and we had 19 new consults. So today will definitely be a busy day. I'm going to prioritize the patients who are NPO who don't have a diet order and also those who don't have access. So the, kind of the hierarchy goes NPO, no access. So there's no way that they're getting their medication safely or their nutrition at all. And then from there it goes NPO, nothing by mouth. Um, I think it's like nothing per oral, but whatever. Um, and then with access, so whether they typically place like short-term feeding tube in their nose called the Dubhoff tube. Um, and then from there, if they have extra time, then I go through the, my patients who have, um, diet orders already in. So that's my prioritization for today. I am going to head on to the medical floor and then go across the street to the neuro ICU. Um, but I have some over here in the medical floors that are some top some top priorities. <laughs> I'm back. It's like, I don't know, 12, 15, 11, 15. I think it's like 11, 15. I'm back in my office clearly and I'm going to go write some notes. I saw six patients this morning. Um, what I typically do on the weekends is I see as many patients as possible in one of the towers and then I make sure I write like I hand off to the nurse and then also message someone on the team and then I write my notes like kind of all combined during lunch. Um, that way I'm not like on the floor forever. It just kind of speeds up the way I go through my day but I make sure I communicate to the people who know like my recommendations so that they're not like okay this girl got seen at 7 45 this morning and now it's like three o'clock and we still don't know the plan so that's kind of how I tackle the weekends so that way like I can prioritize seeing patients I could do a verbal handoff so we know the plan and then at the end of the day or by lunch they'll have a written note um my most challenging patient for today let's see I have this patient who got extubated like an hour before I saw him. <laughs> um, extubation is having a breathing tube placed down in your throat. Um, he got extubated for his surgery, so he had a posterior posterior sur surgical fusion. So instead of approaching anteriorly through the neck, they approached posteriorly in the back of his neck. Um, and he was MPO without access, um, just got off the ventilator, voice is super dysphonic, um, he's in like 10 out of 10 pain when he swallows or just at rest, um, facial grimacing like consistently on swallowing when he swallows water ice chips. He didn't have any overt like coughing or throat clearing, um, but he has like a lot of risk factors. Plus with um, after you have an ACDF or PCF, your increased risk of like edema swelling in your throat is like post-op day three so this is post-op day one and he looked like semi-decent so i um ended up being a little bit more conservative with him and recommended to continue mpo and just do some ice chips and sips of water um because of the increased risk factor that we're going to be seeing like in two days or even by tomorrow with that swelling increasing and even more um, the big challenge is, of course, he doesn't want a tube in his nose, so now the team has to deal with that mess, which I feel really bad about, but 
I just my clinical judgment and my gut said that like he looked eh right now and he's gonna probably be looking even more like riskier when it comes to aspiration or even um efficiency issues where if we're thinking that these muscles are super super swollen and the neck is super swollen then I've seen people with PCF and ACDF having huge efficiency issues clearing out like within that immediate acute um, recovery phase because their muscles just aren't squeezing the way they should. So that was my friend and now he's not going to be too happy with me, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Anyways, I'm not really hungry yet, so I'm going to have extra coffee back there. I'm going to drink my coffee and catch up on these notes. I got six notes to write, and I'm going to speed through them, and I'm going to play some jams, like some like intense studying jams, to get these notes done. Remember when you were a kid, and you literally thought sofa chairs were so cool, and you would do this all the time? I just, that, just my childhood self, you know? I am so embarrassed right now. And this has nothing to do with work. Oh my gosh. Okay, so my roommate, long story short, has like barely lived in the house the last 10 months that I've lived there. Like she's just been doing med school rotations elsewhere. So she really doesn't live there. But when she does come into town, she always gives me a forewarning. So she texted me like two hours ago and was like, hey, just want to let you know my boyfriend and I are spending the next two nights there and I just want to give you a heads up, which was so kind of her. And I'm like, crap, my house right now is literally, there's boxes everywhere, like everywhere. Like she can't get into her bedroom right now because I am packed I packed up my whole bedroom except for my bed and all of those boxes are currently blocking her bedroom door and I was like oh that's great like I, I, I freaking out I was like when are you gonna be in town and she's like we're pulling in right now and clearly I'm at work so I couldn't go home I'm panicking I'm like can I go home and leave work and then come back and like move the boxes because I feel literally so bad and she's like yeah we're pulling in right now and I'm like oh my gosh so I had to apologize to her but like the ironic thing is it's like I packed up all my stuff yesterday and I was going to put it in my car last night but it was like 7 30 and I was like I've been doing this for hours like I'm just gonna do it Sunday after work and so if she only wasn't coming in until like six o'clock, I wouldn't be dealing with this at all, but she's literally in our town home right now. And like, she can't even get into her bedroom because I have boxes blocking the way. I'm so embarrassed. And it's one of those things where like, ugh, I just am so embarrassed. I hate not being like perfect and on top of things sometimes and like I just like this is really impacting me in that like I should care less but like I think that she's gonna think I'm a horrible lazy like not considerate human being because I blocked her bedroom full of my boxes while I'm packing up to move even though she hasn't lived in that apartment for like three months now All right, so I'm home for work. I changed, I got this little Lululemon tank top. This is a um, Kendra Scott cross necklace that my boyfriend's mom gave me and his sister, and then she also got a matching one. So we're little matching cross necklaces. Um, and then I have these Lulu shorts on. <sighs> Are you guys ready to see the boxes? Now my disclosure is that my house looked worse. I just spent the last like 30 to 45 minutes taking all of the stuff that was on the kitchen table and put in my car. So let me show you what my living room looks like. Okay, so this is my new coffee table, just randomly chilling. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. This honestly was, it's like a $300 coffee table that I got from Facebook Marketplace. And yeah, I got it for like a hundred bucks. So I'm excited about that. Look at this box. <laughs> this is my my sectional. <laughs> this is my sectional. 
Okay guys, so for reference. <laughs> this is my couch. And this is my body. This thing is literally huge. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, so like I said, we have the sectional. And then what's else hanging out? This is my gonna be my new bed frame. So that's hanging out over there. And then we have some more boxes. This is double boxed. So two nightstands that I have to build. And then this is a new dresser that I have to build. Um, a secret about me is that I love building IKEA furniture. So I'm excited about these. And then this is my new trash can in a box. But for reference, like, that wasn't covered. But like, this whole little island or bar stool area was covered in boxes, and that entire coffee table was covered in boxes. But I got it all cleaned up, and they're put in my car. I, I don't know why that just bothers me so much. I just like, there's some things I don't care about, when it comes to my character, people think of me differently, but like being an inconvenience to other people or like feeling like I'm intruding or being a burden, that's probably what it is, being a burden. Just like really hits deep. And I infinitely feel so much better about taking all the random boxes and the random like coffee things, or I had like my rice cake, my rice cooker, my scale and my, I don't know waffle maker just hanging out like taking all that stuff and putting it in my car and just getting this area cleaned up and so now the only inconvenience is are these boxes it makes me feel a million times better i really need to pray about that and work on it more because like my roommate truly said like it's not that big of a deal but i just don't like feeling like a burden or an inconvenience to other people but now that it's done i gotta clean a little bit um, I don't really watch Love is Blind, but I binged it this weekend while I was packing, kind of listened to it as a podcast, and now me and my two friends are going to watch it tonight. So, the plan for the rest of the night is to clean, um, go to Trader Joe's and buy some sort of, like, thing for girls' night, and then head over to my friend Hannah's house and watch Love is Blind. Well, guys, I completely forgot to bring my camera this morning so I'm vlogging on my phone check out the back of my car this all this stuff is the stuff that was just hanging out when my roommate came home yesterday so it's Monday it is my last Monday working at this hospital it's crazy I only two more shifts um I I ah! that's how I feel uh, I'm gonna miss this place so much, but I am so excited about the next chapter. So yeah, Monday, today is gonna, oh my God, there's someone in the back of that pickup truck. Today is gonna be a rather interesting day because we have a lot of people out on PTO today. And so it's gonna be a little bit busy. I had Friday and Saturday off, like you saw, saw I worked yesterday. So I have an idea that the case is pretty high and it's monday so we got to get our stuff going for the week and get people eating and drinking and swallowing and talking and all that good stuff so happy happy monday are you kidding me look at the sun it is literally beautiful outside i i just had to take a moment to appreciate this florida 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 you are beautiful today all right, friends, let's talk about today. Um, to recap my last two full days at work, oh my gosh. It's just wild that I'm leaving. These last nine months flew by so, so fast. But I wanted to talk about one of my patients today. So I had a young male who... Um, had a burn had burns to his like face his upper extremity extremities and his back from um putting fire or like fire fluid on a fire and it flashed and splashed in the face and so he was brought to the hospital and then got intubated and then brought to a burn unit for his burns to be treated 
um, was on the ventilator for a long time and then ended up getting trached. So I finally was working with him today because he's tolerating um, ATC trials on trach collar instead of connected to the ventilator. Um, and it was such a fun, fun session because he is relatively young. I would say he's within three years of me. So it was nice to see and work with a patient that is very applicable and like relatable versus patients who are more elderly or even middle-aged and just very different. Like we were doing the PMV trials with him and he grabbed his phone and called his girlfriend and like said, I love you to her. And just, it was a special moment to be part of. Um, and very, very relatable to put myself in his shoes of like, if that was in my young 20s and this happened to me, like how much of my life would have been changed and like how meaningful would it be to be able to call like Jonathan and like talk to him for the first time. So it was cool. Um, but he's not too happy with me because <laughs> he desperately wants to drink water. And I was explaining that we need to do a swallow study with him in radiology or fees before that. And he was just... <laughs> just kept asking me for water and I felt bad saying ice chips only. But that was my interesting case today. Very like close to the heart, I would say. Um, but also a very feel good, feels good case to work with. Um, it's cool to seeing like the impact sometimes you have of patients like right there in the moment because sometimes we only see like the long term change and you don't get that like immediate like, wow, like for me, it's another PMV trial, but for him, it's the first time he's speaking again for like the last 20 days and a huge start of him weaning his trach and <sighs> restoring some pressures back in his throat and getting the ball rolling with eating again. And so, ah, it just felt so good to be part of. I am going to end this vlog here. I know it was kind of just a classic... I don't know, two days of my life at work, nothing too crazy, nothing too exciting, but I am moving and I can't believe that's happening. I'm gonna have to do like an apartment tour and thoughts on starting this new job. And I'm excited to learn and like experience the differences of this hospital versus the one I've just been working at. Um, especially since the hospital I took my clinical fellowship at was the hospital that I did my externship at. And that's the only acute care experience I have. So. I'm excited for a different change of healthcare um, and experience differences because we do grow a lot when we're experiencing new things. Um, so that's all I got for you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll talk to you guys soon.